Telecommunications Privacy Act of 1994, the U.S. federal government can easily obtain archived copies of your emails. And under the Wiretap Act, the FBI can ask websites to give, quote, technical assistance necessary to accomplish the interception of what could be criminal conversations. But much to the chagrin of the FBI, still under current legislation as it stands, they can't force many tech companies into providing real-time wiretaps for all those instant, juicy communications people have. That includes email, Gchat, Skype, Dropbox, Google Voice, and even games like Words with Friends, which have chat features. You know, stuff that happens in real time. According to FBI General Counsel Andrew Weissman, quote, those communications are being used for criminal conversations. Yep, that's definitely how I use words with friends. A spokesperson for Google confirmed that it is possible for companies to set up live surveillance under certain circumstances if they wanted. But how to do so would vary from company to company and could be extremely hard on some smaller companies to comply with. But the FBI very much wants to be able to force companies to set up real-time surveillance at the FBI's bidding. And apparently, they are currently working with members of the intelligence community to craft a proposal that would give them new internet spying powers. Under the draft proposal, according to an anonymous insider, a court could levy a series of escalating fines, starting at tens of thousands of dollars, on companies that fail to comply with real-time wiretap orders. After 90 days, fines that remain unpaid would double daily. Obviously, companies setting up wiretaps on their services is scary from a privacy perspective. I don't want anyone seeing what I text to my friends when I drop seven-letter words on them in Words with Friends. But more than that, these wiretaps could also be susceptible to attacks from hackers who just want to use the wiretaps to spy on people or gain sensitive information, like your credit card number. As one senior councilman from the Center for Democracy and Technology put it, they might as well call the proposal the Cyber Insecurity and Anti-Employment Act, as it would drive innovators overseas. Personally, I have another name they can call this scary proposal, business as usual in Washington. Tonight. Let's talk about that by following me on Twitter at The Resident.